when I came here, I had feelings, and, and I thought I was in love with God, and I must be slipping away from the Lord because I, I don't feel that passion that I had before. Love goes far beyond feeling. The love of God goes far beyond feeling. Amen. Let's open our Bible to 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. And my prayer for you today is that whatever kind of mental block would stop you from knowing that love, and that God is going to remove it and open you up to the love of God afresh because there are, there are three, uh, three things Papa was sharing with us about love and that love, there's a heart of love, there's the power of love, and there's the character of love. And we'll be looking at that over the course of, of the month by the grace of God. But there are factors when it comes to love. Like, for example, do you know that no matter how hard you try, you can't love someone from your mind? You know what I mean? Like, have you ever tried to do that? You're just like, I know I should love this person. And you may know what it looks like. And you may know what to say, but someone will sense that it's not genuine. Why? Because love doesn't come from the mind, it comes from the heart. Amen. And so if you know that love comes from the heart, you want your heart to be prepared for God's love. But you know what that means also? Listen to this. I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. Some of you are maybe praying, God, what do you want me to do in life? And what's direction? And what's all these things? Can I tell you something? If you will know God's love, you will know his heart. Because love flows from the heart. So if you will know God's love, if you will take time to know that love and search it out, you will automatically begin to know the heart of the Father. There are just some things that you just get right. Yeah, you just get them right. Like, to be honest, there are probably some of you here that know the Bible better than me. But if you know it only mentally, and you're not after the heart of the Father, you still get it wrong. There are some things that I was getting right in my life at a young age, not because I knew it was the right thing, but because, because love just somehow you just find yourself doing the right thing and later on you find out, oh, God talks about this. God wants you to do these things. These things are, are right. And that's why sometimes it's so hard because when the love isn't there, you can teach people and teach people and teach them. And you can tell them and tell them and tell them. And they're still getting it wrong. Listen, if you have found yourself on that side of the spectrum where you, are, where you just keep hearing what to do and hearing what to do, but you find you're still somehow just kind of getting it wrong, getting it wrong, this is your month. Oh, come on, come on. Church, somebody say a big amen. I said, if you have been getting it wrong, no matter how many times you have been taught, this is your month. You know why? Because love is going to, when love is rooted and grounded in your heart, you as a believer become rooted and grounded. When love is reigning in the heart, there's just some things that, although they seemed hard before, can I share something with you? Let me share something with you. I, I, I want to make it a little bit more. I, I'm not always very open, but I want to be open this morning about some things that I, that I do just so you can understand or, 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 or see what is the kind of love, like what does it look like when, when love is working. And so um, most times I, I will fast and I'll wait on the Lord, on, on for, especially if I'm ministering on the Sunday, I will do that. But sometimes there are times maybe where I'm tired or I'm hungry and I'll ask the Lord, okay, Lord, should, is it okay? Can, can I eat? Do you want me to fast? What do you want me to do? And then depend. And most times he'll be, he'll tell, okay, go ahead. Although sometimes he won't, okay? But he's just, maybe I'm hungry or I'm tired. Or I'm just like, Lord, I just want to eat. Can I do it? Whatever, right? And I'll ask him. But um, this morning today, I was actually very tired. I was very, very tired. And I'd worked so, 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 so much. Pastor Amanda knows. It's God's grace that, that she's here this morning because in like two days, we probably worked almost 20 hours, right? And, and I barely slept and I was tired. And when you're tired, you get so hungry. I was telling the Lord this morning. I, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? You, you get, you're just hungry. And it's actually, I can tell you why. Because when you don't sleep, your body doesn't produce uh, the proper hormone to balance out ghrelin. So your ghrelin levels are very high. And ghrelin is the hormone that tells you eat. 
So your ghrelin levels are high. So if you don't get the right sleep, you will just be hungry. And, and I was just tired. I barely slept. I'd worked so hard. And I was coming and I was telling the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm so hungry. I just want to eat. And I wasn't saying anything. So I was driving. I was planning. I was trying to pass the man in the nose. I was getting out here as quick as I, as I could. And I was like, on my way here, I'm, I'm going to go to Tim Hortons. And then I'm like, nah, I feel bad. I'm like, you know what? Let me get a patty. There's a patty place over here. And I'm driving. <laughs> Right, and I, on my way to service, I'm thinking about these things, and I was just so hungry. I, and so, it was, see if you guys know Sam's, I was going to pull into Sam's, and I was going to grab an energy drink and get a patty, and I was going to go in. And, and I was just going in, but the whole time, because God hadn't told me no, I was still like, Lord, but what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? But I was like, but in my head, I'm also like, but this is what I want to do. <laughs> And I pulled into the parking lot, and as I and I didn't know why at the time because I couldn't understand why I would say this. But as I was pulling, literally as I was pulling into the parking lot of Sam, I just heard no. I said, "Okay, Lord." So, but that was very hard for me because I was so hungry. So I said, "Lord, I'm gonna do this because I love you. And if you are telling me not to do this, I know because you love me, you want the best for me." So I'm like, maybe there's a reason you're telling me this. I don't know. I wasn't planning to have this as part of the message. But he told me no. So I turned around almost in tears because I was so hungry. <laughs> All right. And I turned around and I drove out of the parking lot. And then, you know, the devil's a liar because this person in this infinity pulls in front of me. And now was blocking me from getting out. I'm like, why isn't this guy turning now? I'm stuck. And, and the thought came, right? I'm like, well, maybe God is, that. maybe I didn't hear right. I should just pull into the parking lot. I'm like, Lord, no, if you're telling me to do this, grace will be there. You're going to help me. You're going to strengthen me. And so I just said no, and I waited, even though I was getting irritated. This guy wasn't turning. And then and I've never seen someone pull so slowly out of the curb. And as soon as he was out of my way, then he sped off. I'm like, Lord, why am I saying this? Because there's some things that when you love, you will just do naturally or you will bear the pain. Because the character of love, the nature of love is, yes, compassion and kindness. But it teaches you to bear some burdens that normally you wouldn't bear. You couldn't, you, you couldn't carry on your own. But because of the love that you have. You know what I'm talking about? Some parents have an inkling of what, it's, uh, of what God's love is like when they think of their children. Where they want to bear, bear some pains for their children. Right? God's is much greater because that love actually brought him to the cross. That love caused him to bear the weight and the pain of the sin of the world. And even more than that, to bear the pain of the father forsaking him. That's what love does. People think nails held him to the cross, but there's a popular saying that it was actually that love that held him there. First John chapter 4 verse 9, I want to show you some things just really, really quickly today as we get ready excuse me, and prepared. And I want to encourage you, listen, please, I know your week is busy. I know you have things to do, but may the love of God, listen, the Bible says that we can be led into the love of God. We can be kept in the love of God. And my prayer for you is that this week you will be, that love will lead you on the right things to do. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's, 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 it can be hard at times. It can be Doing the right thing is not always easy, but it's the right thing. And so when you love, you, you, will, do the, you will do what God is asking you to do. And, and, it, and this is the thing. I want to tell you guys again. Listen, you cannot fake it. You can't do the right thing for a season. But if it's not in you, it's not in you. That's why you tell the Lord, Lord, I need that love. Because love arrests. Love captivates. Love captures. When love begins to work, you're just drawn in. You want to know the heart of the Father. Know His love. And I'll tell you something. There are some things that you just cannot do. There are some, when you love God, there are some things that you just won't do. You say, this is against my Father. And if you are doing it because of weakness, then you know what love will do? Love will drive you to the Father to say, Lord, it's not right. Help me. Strengthen me. Why? Because you can't bear the burden of thinking you're doing something against your father. Listen, I'm not always perfect with Pastor Amanda. She knows I get things wrong. But it hurts me so much when I hurt her. If I get her upset or, or I bother her, I've done something against her. Listen, it bothers me because I love her. 
And even though I might not always get it right, I'll tell her, okay, I want to work on this. I, will, I can do better. Do you know why? Because love will always push you. Paul said the love of Christ constrains. It compels. It motivates. It tells you, Lord, if I got it wrong now, help me. I want to do better for you. And sometimes people want to do better for blessing. Yeah, you will get blessed. There, there are blessings and there are principles. But some they want to get better for blessing or for healing or for settlement or establishment. But listen, if you want to do better because you love him, you will not be able to outrun the blessing. You, you can't. Because he knows how to do some things that just blow your mind. And, I've been, and in this season, as we were transitioning into September, I'm being, I don't know why I'm teaching like this. I'm not even, I haven't even gone to my first scripture. But I just, I want you guys to catch that heart. I want you guys to know that love because there are just some things you can't outrun. And, you know, Papa was sharing the testimony about what God did, did for him. And I've been thinking about that, Papa, about, about how he supplied when it came to the funeral. And I've just been thinking, Lord, like there's really nothing you can't do. And I've just been asking him, Lord, help me to just be so passionate for the things that you're passionate about. And Lord, you take care of my things. And can I tell you something? Especially because how many of you know that when it comes to the battle of the heart, a lot of people in North America, what the battle is, is between God and mammon. Because what will happen, and do you know why it's such a powerful battle? Do you know why? Because... In many ways, money is your life in your hand. You spent time in some things. You did this because you wanted to achieve something. And if money is not there, it's like, how will my needs get met? God, this week, we just, we were, pa me and my wife, we were passionate for a need in the house. And, and I told God, whatever it takes. And there are some things that we had to do that normally I know my limit. I will go, but I won't go to a certain point. But I was just like, Lord, it just has to be done. And when I was like thinking back, I'm just, I'm telling you guys these things because I want you to understand what happens when love takes over, okay? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I, I don't want you to think I'm like, Boasting because I'm not trying to boast. I don't like sharing these things to be honest But I just want you to understand like when love is beginning to work so you can have an idea of what does it look like? What does it look like? I told the Lord, Lord whatever it takes and and I went to a point that I won't normally go to Because I was just afraid I'm scared to I, I'm like how if, if I do this how is it gonna impact me? But I said Lord whatever it takes and, and we did it and and it was challenging for me but do you know that within about two days I began to see God move in a way where I was just like, this is what Papa's talking about. This is what he's talking about, where God so surprises you that I'm like, Lord, I was telling the Lord, I'm like, Lord, if you're going to keep doing this, maybe I need to, <laughs> maybe I need to do a little bit more. But can I, t but can I tell you something? Can I, uh, listen to me and, and hear my heart on this. It's not, it wasn't really the money though, Right? If I did it with 10,000 or I did it with 10 cents, that was not what God was responding to. What God was responding to was he, because we respond to God's love, but God also responds to your love. And so my love to say, Lord, it, this thing cannot be. Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, help me. My passion that was coming out of love, that's what God responded to. And you cannot fake that because I can say, I will do this amount or I'll do that amount and I can reason it out and can call. But God doesn't respond to your mind. He responds to the heart. That's why sometimes I always laugh when people tell me, well, God knows my heart. It's like, do you want him to know it right now? <laughs> because most times when you're saying that, and maybe not all the time, but I have found that most times when people say, God knows my heart, you don't even know your heart. You are deceiving yourself with that statement. 
Because usually when people will say it, they'll, they'll be like, well, you know what, I, I worked rather than come to church, but God knows my heart. Or, you know, I, w I was going to give and I was going to sow, but it's challenging for me right now. And God knows my heart. It's like, okay, but do you know your heart? Do you know your heart? There was something, let me tell you, I, I'm being very personal this morning. I don't, I don't know why, but there, there, there was something God worked in me when I was very, when I was young, when I worked at Cineplex when I was 19. And I, and, and actually it wasn't 19, maybe it was, yeah, it was around the time that I started, it was after I got drunk at the work Christmas party. And it was then that I made up my mind, I was like, Lord, I have to, because I was underage and I actually got us banned from QSIS, if you know where that is, at Markham and Kingston. I got us banned from there because I, I got drunk and I was vomiting on myself in the snow and I was just, and, and I remember all my friends coming up to me and telling me, oh, it's okay, it gets better from here and it's so much fun. And I remember thinking, because I'm like, I'm a Christian and many of them didn't know I was a Christian. I'm like, do I even know I'm a Christian? And, and, I, and, and I remember thinking, I'm like, I need to make up my mind. Am I going to start being serious about God or am I going to keep fooling around? I said, Lord, I want to start being serious. And, and I remember one of the things God began to do in me is he began to tell me, because I worked Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, because those were the busy days and they wanted you to work and they'd say they'd give you good shifts. And I started telling them I can't work on Sundays anymore. And, and the lady was like, I'm going to take away all your shifts. I'm going to give you only the worst ones. You still have to do this. And I just told her, I'm like, I will not work on Sunday. Either fire me or do whatever you need to do. But I'm like, I won't compromise in this area. Can I tell you something? God has been so faithful. This is why it's always been hard for me to be honest in truth because God helped me when I was young. I've always wondered when people say, well, I've got, I've got to work. I don't want to come to church. But what's your father's passion? Don't you know he can take care of you? The Bible says, Matthew 6, says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. These, you know why someone will seek the kingdom? Because they love the king. And so there's something that begins to happen that when you, when you say, God, there are some things I won't compromise on because of you. Not because of Pastor David, not because of Papa, not because of, tell, tell your neighbor, not because of you. <laughs> yeah, look at someone, tell them, not because of you. There are some things you're not going to compromise on, not because of the people around you. Because you know what the thing is, is as soon as those things are gone, it's, it's as if the person is not a believer. Right? But when it's God, he's always there. And the best part is, and this is what I really want to encourage you in, is even if you're like, well, I don't know what that love can be like, or what if I make a mistake? But like the most, the thing about love is that it's not about the mistake that you made. It's about what's your response to it after? How do you respond? Is it like, well, this is just me, and this is how I'm going to live? Or is it, Lord, I know this doesn't please you. Help me, Lord. First John 4, 9. Let's go there. And you know what's so beautiful about God's love? Is God's love isn't just a feeling. I, I love this. When Papa was sharing this with us, I was like, because I, I think, I, if I remember, he was like asking us, like, what do you think about love or whatever? And I was glad that I didn't have to answer, right? Because whoever it was, like, you know, it's this feeling that you get. And he's like, yeah, many people think it's a feeling. Many people think it's like when you're like, oh, I just love that person when you get around them. And you, and you know what I mean? And, and it's like, for some people, that's not even love. That's just like you're attracted and you're nervous, right? Some people, it's a level of human love, right? But human love has limitations. And so they think that love is like a feeling. And so sometimes they'll come out to church and, and they're like, well, like I'm not feeling anything. When I came here, I had feelings, and, and I thought I was in love with God, and I must be slipping away from the Lord because I, I don't feel that passion that I had before. Love goes far beyond feeling. The love of God goes far beyond feeling. And there is something that he said, and, and, and I've just been stuck on it all week. Let's look at 1 John 4 and I'm not stuck on it, but thinking on it all week. And, and I just love this. He says, in this was manifested, or in this was revealed, or made known, or, or brought to light the love of God towards us. So he's like, he's like, do you want to know what God's love looks like? Some 
ladies, sometimes you think a guy, I mean, like, help me out here, right? But maybe you think a guy likes you because he brought you chocolates, right? Or maybe when you were younger. Or maybe you think a, a, a guy loves you because he told you I love you. Maybe you think a guy loves you because, you, you know, he shares some of his paycheck with you. Right? Or men, maybe you think that you love a woman because like, you just feel happy when you're around them or whatever it is. Right? But it's like, do you want to know what God's love looks like towards you? It says his love, what it looks like towards you is that number one is he sent his son. Right? Romans 5, 8 says, says in, thi um, in this the love of God was made manifested in that while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. So God's, so the first thing I want you to understand about God's love is that God's love came without a precondition. You know, have you ever heard that? I'll love you, but you have to do. Oh, you know, you know why I don't love you? You know why I don't like you? Because you don't do. If God treated, listen, let me speak to the ladies for a second. If God treated you the way some of these men treat you, you would be in hell right now. Be, but God's love is not conditional. It's not wicked like those men. Because that, that's not even real love. No, I, I don't love you. I don't like you because you do this, you do that, you do. Can you imagine if God treated you like that? Listen, if you want to start having, uh, maybe your image has been battered and you want to strengthen your, your love. Or you want to strengthen the image that you have. Begin to know God's love. See how much he has valued you. It says his love commended or manifested or revealed towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ. He sent Jesus because he loved you, not because of what you did. Because you are a sinner. That's his love. So his love was manifested. Let's go back, First John 4 9. I'm going to round up very shortly. Oh, Lord, help me. It's already 12 30. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might what? Live through. Can we read that together? That we might what? Live through him. Many people are living, but they're living through grave. Many people are living, but they're living through devil. Many people are living, but they're living through the world. Many people are living, but they're living through sin. You know what I mean by that? It's like you are going through your day, but there's just devil there. There's just world there. There's just sickness there. There's just sin there. And it's like they don't, you're wondering, how can I live beyond these things? It's like I'm just going through my day and these enemies are just following me around. And God said, I loved you so much that my love sent myself my son so that you can begin to live a life of victory living it through him so God's love goes beyond a feeling it takes you to a place of victory God's love goes beyond limitations and it's unconditional God's love goes beyond if you, if, if you will be better, then I will love you. No, his love brings you to be better. Many people are saying, get better, get better, get better, then I'll love you. God's love says, I've made you better. God's love says, I will take you to a place where you are better. God's love brings you to victory. And so I want to encourage you to know this love. Can we rise up this?